Well, that was dreadful. And now I am the Irish guy, and right. First of all, I think it is disgraceful that the Ballon d'Or results were already spoiled hours in advance. Lads, because of this, we literally had Rodri sobbing in his seat for two hours. The guy looked like a lonely middle-aged spinster watching The Notebook with her cat. We were all robbed of seeing a genuine reaction to his name being announced. I want him to discover that he's been crowned the best player in world football in front of everyone. I don't want him having four hours to digest the news in private. I don't want it being revealed to him while he scrolls through Twitter halfway through lunch with his nan. I don't want Rodri to find out that he's actually achieved this mountainous childhood dream when he's got an egg sandwich in his mouth. I want to see raw emotion. I mean, that's raw genuine reactions at the Ballon d'Or ceremony is what spawned the iconic Look, I will talk about the situation of Manchester United this week, yes. But today, I just want to talk about the absolute disgrace that was the Ballon d'Or last night. Lads, watch the moment the winner was announced. Through the eyes of speed. The 2024 Ballon d'Or. Stop saying Vinny. Vinny, Vinny, Vinny. Why is he saying Vinny? He knows he's not in the building. Lads, this man is the most obnoxious creature on the internet. And even he is shocked at people audibly screaming Vinny's name. Even this teenage goblin thinks that behavior is rude. That's when you know you've gone too far. If this etiquette is even beyond someone whose content probably consists of burping on sheep. Uh, I don't know, I, I don't watch his stuff. Vinny? Lads, this is the actual Ballon d'Or. And yet people are just screaming out the name of who they want to win. You swear this was an X Factor Life show? No, this is supposed to be the glamorous prestigious football awards. Instead, it sounds like you got fat lunch ladies in a, packed into a sweaty ITV studio screaming, Leona! Or, Ali! Imagine shouting Vinny over and over again when you know he has not won. It's like you're doing this just to spite poor old Rodri. Try and ruin his big moment. As you imagine, the city player hasn't felt so annoyed and disrespected by people repeatedly shouting Vinny since company lined up the shot against Leicester in 2019. Hey, Vinny! Vinny! Don't shoot! No, Vinny, no! Why? Why is he acting shocked? Don't act like everyone in the arena didn't already know the result. He really thought Vinicius Jr. would win the Ballon d'Or. Despite the fact that nobody from Real Madrid was in attendance? What, you thought he'd accept the crowning achievement of his lifetime in a WhatsApp phone call? Did you think Vinicius Jr. was gonna crawl out of the air vent and magically accept this gong? Lads, this kid lives on the internet. And you're trying to tell me he avoided the spoilers? Acting surprised that Rodri won it. It's like someone renting a DVD of Avengers Endgame now and acting shocked when Iron Man dies. Yeah, the only way you could have avoided that spoiler would be if you'd spent the last five years living as an Eskimo, just spending every day eating snow and begging penguins for a kiss. Having this entire evening spoiled before Chris MD even took his seat, and probably propped up on a few jumpers so you could see above the chair in front of him, it just made the whole evening a pointless waste of time. I mean, can we please ban Twitter journalists from spoiling this thing in future. I mean, this equivalent of those awful people who parked outside bookshops in the summer of 2007, ready to shout at nerds in the queue that Hedwig dies in the final Harry Potter book. But the biggest disgrace from this whole night was that Real Madrid did not even attend. Yeah, Madrid has said they feel disrespected for being snubbed. Is this a joke? Lads, before last night, a Real Madrid player had won the Ballon d'Or prize nine times since the millennium. Nine! Christ, both two different Real Madrid players have won it since Cristiano Ronaldo's last one. This whole fallout from this Ballon d'Or disgrace has been more grating than clicking on a video and hearing, Hello darlings, and Helga. God, I despise that witch. I actually think Real Madrid choosing to pull their players out of this event will have backfired on them internally. Because don't get it twisted, I highly doubt that Jude Bellingham was cool with not turning up to this thing. Lads, standing on a Ballon d'Or podium, holding as the third best player in the world is a stupendously monumental moment. I mean, lads, I promise you, the likes of Eric Cantona, Dennis Burkamp, Gary Lippmann, and Alan Shearer, Oliver Kahn, Stephen Gerrard, Antoine Griezmann are probably mega proud to have finished third at Ballon d'Ors. I mean, Christ well, Jorginho probably has a photo of it nailed to his fridge. Every time he goes to make himself a Nutella scone, he probably breaks out in beautiful tears. Yeah, you have robbed Jude of that moment. You have robbed a former Birmingham City midfielder of that honor. You have robbed Carlo Ancelotti the chance to stand on stage and accept the inaugural Johan Cruyff Award for world's best coach. Don't you think the Italian maestro would have loved nothing more than to shove this in the face of everyone who's been calling him 
a pasted ogre with the tactics of banana bread ever since that El Clasico mess? Although, um, according to his Twitter page, his fingers have been as active as his eyebrows. I would like to thank my family, my president, my players, and above all, Vinicius and Carvajal. This is the most pathetic acceptance award speech since Will Smith. Oh, Ancelotti, this is just sad. We have just witnessed one of the greatest managers of all time be turned into a mouthpiece puppet. This man is crowned the best coach in the world and he's choosing to pathetically toe the company line and make this all about the players who should have won the Ballon d'Or. Because lads, not mentioning Bellingham, is very telling because Madrid are basically using Danny Carvajal as a petty stick to beat UEFA with because nobody at Real Madrid believes this right back should win the Ballon d'Or. Nobody. But they are basically saying that, okay. If you're not awarding this to Vinicius because Spain won the Euros, oh well, then you have to give it to Carvajal then. He's won the Champions League and the Euros, so you have to give it to him. I mean, poor old Carvajal has been used as nothing more than a whataboutery pawn. Look, Carlo, I get that it must be a wonderful proud feeling when a player wins the Ballon d'Or on your watch. But it's not like this has never happened to you before. The Ballon d'Or has been given to a player that Ancelotti coached that year on five separate occasions. Andrei Shevchenko and Kaka at AC Milan in 2004 and 2007. Cristiano Ronaldo at Real Madrid in 2013 and 2014. And Karim Benzema at Real Madrid just two years ago. No manager in the world has coached more players than Ballon d'Ors, not even Pep Guardiola. So relax. I get that the man is desperately clinging to his job after a 4 0 loss to Barcelona. But this tweet has made him look like such a puppet. I'm half expecting to next week seeing him having brunch on Sesame Street. Anzi, one of the greatest managers of all time, is just two soppy tweets away from getting off with Miss Piggy in a Burger King toilet. If the criteria for the award did not declare Vinicius the winner, the same criteria should declare Carvajal the winner. Since that was not the case, it is clear that the Ballon d'Or and UEFA do not respect Real Madrid. Real Madrid will not be where they are not respected. What? If Danny Carvajal really was the best player in the world, then the club would not be currently twerking for the attentions of Trent Alexander-Arnold. Look, he is a fabulous right back and a born winner, but he only started 24 league matches last season. He missed three Champions League games, he was suspended for Spain's Euro 2024 semi-final, and oh yeah, He's Danny Carvajal! That's it, it's pathetic. This is the behavior of children. Do you know how much of a disgrace it is that UEFA could not even fill the podium? That Rodri was just left to stand up there all alone? You've essentially just abandoned a crippled man to stand on stage alone. Honestly, oh, seeing that poor bloke hobbling up those steps. Sorry, I thought this was the Ballon d'Or, not the Oscars. I get it, um, Pistorius. And so for Real's players to leave him up there alone with no congratulations. I don't care what anyone says, that will always taint Rodri's award. He will always remember how he was the only one on stage because everyone pretended that him winning was some sort of injustice, a disgrace, that the biggest club in his home nation didn't even want to appreciate him having helped them win the Euros. Like, it's crazy. I will say that international tournaments sway the votes in the Ballon d'Or too much. This is supposed to be an award for a year's worth of work. I don't think it's fair to basically give this trophy to someone based on what? Six games in the summer? Sure, it should play a role, but I think it plays too big a role. For example, I don't think it was fair that Luka Modric won the Ballon d'Or in 2018, purely because he dragged Croatia to a World Cup final. Lads, between February and September, the man didn't actually put three La Liga starts together. A month before the award, the man was playing in midfield as Real collected just one point from a possible 15. That was relegated form under Lapetegui, whilst Cristiano Ronaldo was literally plundering in goals every week at Juventus. Off the back of a 44-goal Champions League winning season for Real Madrid, Modric was not the best player in the world. Ronaldo had the best 2018. It should have been him. But no, Modric was given it because he lost a World Cup final. I mean, that's Ronaldo Nazario was an amazing footballer, but he shouldn't have won the Ballon d'Or that year. He single-handedly won Brazil the World Cup in the summer. Great! Well, that was such an injury-blighted year for him at both Inter Milan and Real Madrid. Um, he only trickled in nine goals across both Syria and La Liga in 2002. The award should have instead gone to Zidane or Raul. That was international football ruling the Ballon d'Or. And there is no bigger indication of how much international tournaments spoil this thing than in 2006 because Fabio Cannavaro won it and Gianluigi Buffon finished second. Yeah, they, they both won the World Cup at Italy that summer, sure. But if you look at their club seasons in 2006, they officially 
Finish bottom of Syria. That's where the history books have placed Juventus in 2006. As they were immediately stripped of their title and devoted to Serie B, Buffon literally spent the second half of 2006 playing against Italian minnows in the second tier. And yet he was still voted the second best player in the world? Based on what? A season of cheating? You cannot relegate Juventus and announce to the world that all their achievements were actually fake and yet still reward their two best players? I'm gonna say I think that 2006 Ballon d'Or should have gone to Ronaldinho. 26 goals and 24 assists for Barcelona. Barcelona, as they won La Liga and the Champions League. That man was the best player in the world in 2006. That should have gone to him with Sami Lato finishing second and then Thierry Henry in third. But did you hear Barcelona whining about disrespect that summer? Did they stop their players from attending out of spite? No, and they would have had legitimate claims to a robbery that summer considering that Cannavaro and Juventus' achievements were deleted on a computer. It, it didn't make sense. Look, I don't think Rodri should have won it. I think he was influenced too heavily by Spain having won the Euros. If anything, Rodri had a better season the previous year when Manchester City won the treble. I mean, for Manchester City levels, last season was, was pretty underwhelming. And yet treble winning Rodri had only finished fifth. According to the Battle of Door 2003, he was only the third best player at the Eddie had. And now he's the best in the world. I think a Real player should have won it, but not finishes. Jude Bellingham. Come on, his debut season in Spanish football, representing the biggest and most pressurized club in the world. Just three years after quitting Birmingham City to bang in 23 goals and chalk up 13 assists in his debut season, he scored three goals in El Clasico's. He won both the Liga and the Champions League. And he carved out the moment of the summer for that insane bicycle kick to rescue England at the last minute against Slovakia. Oh yeah, and he got an assist in the Euro 2024 final too. I'd have given it to him. Vinicius had a great season too, but I think people are getting mixed up and blinded by his form this season, which doesn't count. This is truly Ballon d'Or winning form at the minute. He's got 8 goals and 7 assists in 50 matches and just smacked in a sensational hat-trick against Borussia Dortmund in the Champions League. Well, look, Vinny was class last season too, but I don't think anybody can score 15 league goals in a season and assume they have the divine right to be the best player on the planet. I mean, come on, last season, the guy scored just one more league goal than Chris Wood. Honestly, I know he won the Champions League, but as the Liga numbers, they don't look Ballon d'Or worthy. They just resemble peak Woodford Zaha. 15 goals and 6 assists. Those are numbers Gabriel Martinelli was putting up two years ago. I mean, don't forget, VJ only played 26 league games too, missing huge chunks of the season through injury. 16-year-old Laminia Mal, by comparison, he was fit for every single Barca match. Look, I'll be honest, Madrid have been robbed at a Ballon d'Or ceremony before, but it's not this one. It was the first one. Back in 1956, when Alfredo Di Stefano had enjoyed a 29-goal season for Real Madrid, helping them win the first of his five Champions Leagues in a row, someone who was 30 years of age and arguably in his peak, one of the greatest footballers of all time, an absolute shoo-in for the inaugural Ballon d'Or, surely, and he instead loses out to Stanley Matthews of Blackpool, who was 41. Th that was a robbery. I could understand Real Madrid being insulted back then when their arguable GOAT was being pipped by somebody who's just nine years of his 50th birthday. Let's put it in context. When Matthews lifted the Ballon d'Or, he was six months older than Yaya Torre is now. Matthews was one year older than Arjen Robin and Fernando Torres are now. I mean, try to imagine either of those players being crowned the best player in the world in 2024. It's like trying to imagine the results of Elmo's prostate exam. I don't know. What saddens me is that we are going to see this more and more because the Ballon d'Or was sort of not cancelled but paused for a solid decade. Since 2008 up until the last World Cup, these awards were pretty much a closed shop because yeah, some players did feel slighted not to win the award in certain years. Like Wesley Schneider in 2010 and Frank Ribery in 2013, with both players having won the treble that year. But we didn't hear that much fuss. We didn't hear boycott threats because deep down, everyone, including them, knew that neither were the best player in the world. This was always a tussle between Ronaldo and Messi. Finishing third would have been seen as a major win, but now that both Messi and Ronaldo have drifted off into the wilderness, it's up for grabs again and now now we've got social media which we didn't have the last time this thing was not dominated by either player all the way back in 2007 realistically we could be looking at a different winner every year for the next decade but because of the influence of these players now and due to the soft nature of society where successful people feel so entitled to things i think we're gonna get more strops and sulks when players don't win but yeah this whole thing is just blech Anyway, that's the interview. Let me know what you think. Did you think it was a disgrace? Of course it was. Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give a big channel. Because always, I'll talk to you in a while.